Here we're going to find an exact solution to the following quintic polynomial equation. And we know since it's a quintic polynomial equation and we are trying to find an exact solution, there must be some sort of trick that makes this possible in the first place because generally something like this is not a reasonable question to ask. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus 4x four cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. And we're going to start with the substitution. And the substitution we'll use is actually pretty common for finding roots of higher degree polynomials. And that is, we'll set x equal to t plus 1 over t. And then we'll plug that into here and expand. But notice, if we plug t plus 1 over t into here, then we'll need to have a formula for a binomial to the fifth power, fourth, third, second, and, well, first. And the best way to maybe get that type of thing quickly is by using Pascal's triangle. So let's get a couple of rows of Pascal's triangle here that we can use. So it starts here with 1, and then we have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and then finally, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So let's just recall real quick that these rows represent the coefficients in the expansion of, let's say, a plus b to the n power. So this is like a plus b to the 0 power. So the coefficient of a to the 0 times b to the 0 is 1. And then this second row is like a plus b to the first power. And then way down here, this is like a plus b to the fifth power. So notice the coefficient of a to the fifth is 1. The coefficient of a to the fourth times b is five and then so on and so forth. Okay, so now that we have this nice visual tool on the board, let's calculate x to the fifth, fourth, third, second, and first using this substitution. So let's notice that x to the first, well, that's just t plus one over t. x squared, well, there's not really anything to do here because squaring a binomial is quite simple. That'll give us t squared plus two, times t times one over t, but that'll just be two, and then plus one over t squared. Okay, then we'll have x cubed will be t cubed plus three times t. Well, why is it t? Well, that's because we have t squared times one over t, and then the next one will be plus three over t plus one over t cubed. So let's notice the power of the exponent changes by two at each step. Here we're descending by two. Here we're also descending by two. In fact, up here we're also descending by two. t goes to t to the minus one. Okay, then x to the fourth, so that'll give us t to the fourth plus four t squared plus six plus four over t squared plus one over t to the fourth. Again, that's by using this next to last row that we have written of Pascal's triangle and doing the expansion. So now let's do the same thing for x to the fifth. We'll see that we get t to the fifth and then plus 5t cubed plus 10t plus 10 over t plus 5 over t cubed and then finally plus 1 over t to the fifth. So this is looking good. Now we'd like to take our polynomial, which maybe I'll just call it our for our polynomial, it's this thing right here, and plug in these expansions of x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, and x to the fifth. And this is just a game of symbolic manipulation and bookkeeping. So we'll just jump to what the solution is. So what we end up getting is t to the fifth minus t to the fourth plus t cubed minus t squared plus t minus one plus one over t minus one over t squared plus one over t cubed minus one over t to the fourth and finally plus 
one over t to the fifth. So there's some nice symmetry built into this equation. And just as a spot check to make sure everything makes sense, let's check that this coefficient of t cubed is correct. So we get five t cubed from this x to the fifth term. The only other appearance of t cubed is right here in this x cubed term. But notice over here, x cubed is attached with a minus four. So we have five of them from here, minus four of them from here because of the coefficient, that gives us a plus one t cubed. So doing a spot check on that coefficient, this makes sense. Okay, so now let's bring this expression up and then we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, using the substitution x equals t plus one over t, we're able to write this expression involving x in terms of this expression involving t. Now I'd like to find a common denominator. Notice that common denominator will pretty clearly be t to the fifth. So that'll allow me to write this as t to the 10 because I need to multiply all of these by t to the fifth in order to give myself that common denominator. And then let's see, minus t to the nine plus t to the eight minus t to the seven plus t to the six minus t to the fifth plus t to the fourth minus t cubed plus t squared minus t plus one. And then like I said, this is all over t to the fifth. But now looking at this, we have an alternating sum in the numerator that starts at t to the 10th and goes down all the way to one using all of the powers of t. But that gives us some motivation to multiply the numerator and the denominator by t plus one. And we can do that without worries because t equals minus one will not be a solution here. Okay, so let's see what happens when we multiply that through to the numerator. Well, it's actually pretty nice. We'll get a copy of this multiplied by t and a copy of this multiplied by one, but that'll give us a shifting of the powers of t so that almost everything cancels. And this is actually kind of a well-known um, factorization. So what we'll end up getting is t to the 11 plus one. And then like I said, we'll have t to the fifth and then t plus one in the denominator. But this is just a rewriting of something that we said equal to zero, so that means it itself is equal to zero. But a rational function is equal to zero if and only if the numerator is equal to zero. So that tells us that t to the 11 plus one equals zero. But that means if t is real, then it's equal to minus one. But we already know that t is not equal to minus one because that doesn't make sense with this denominator. So that means t must take on a complex value. And in fact, what we see is that if t to the 11 equals minus one, then we can set t equal to e to the i times pi over 11. So why is that? So let's maybe answer that question real quick. Well, that's because then we would have t to the 11 is the same thing as e to the i times pi, but by Euler's famous formula, that's equal to minus one. Okay, but now we're about ready to finish all of this off. So we know that x is equal to t plus t inverse, so that'll be e to the i pi over 11 plus e to the minus i pi over 11. Next, we can expand each of those using Euler's formula. So that'll be cos pi over 11 plus i sine pi over 11. So that's the first one. And then the second one will expand as cos pi over 11 minus i sine pi over 11. But we get some cancellation there. Notice the imaginary parts cancel and we're left with cos pi over 11 plus itself. In other words, two times the cosine of pi over 11. And in fact, we have found our solution to this quintic polynomial equation. And how could we find more solutions? Well, we could find more solutions by using the periodicity of this complex exponential. So instead of writing that as e to the i pi, we would maybe write that as e to the i pi plus two times k. 
and then take the 11th root like we did here, and that'll give us all of the other solutions. And that's a good place to stop.